All right, folks, so whether you have a classic MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air 13-inch, 11-inch, a Retina MacBook Pro 13-inch, a 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro, or even uh, a Mac Pro or an iMac with a fairly small amount of internal storage, and you want to expand that storage on the outside. Well, before we used to do that with, you know, desktop, external, um, storage solutions which are not very practical and also compared to today's standards not very fast so what I did I ordered um, from Amazon in this case here and whenever you throw out your package make sure you block out your name if somebody goes through your trash just a by the way notice here so anyways let's open that up um, the reason I went for a solid state drive, in this case a, let me show you if this shows here properly, a Transcend 512 gigabytes, which at this point of doing, uh, prices come under $200, so fairly inexpensive. You can buy a pre-made solution, but the pre-made solutions, what do I mean by that, it already has the enclosure in it, um, is a lot more expensive. And then I ordered an enclosure, and this enclosure is USB 3.0. Uh, so your MacBook, all the recent MacBook Airs, Retina MacBook Pros, and so forth, even the latest um, 2012 uh, classic uh, MacBook Pro support USB 3.0. So that means we actually can tap into something uh, like this. Um, if you would have only USB 2.0, this can be as fast as it wants to be. Um, it doesn't do us any good. I'm trying to get a, show you a good picture. Uh, an excellent brand would be, um, for example, uh, SanDisk, uh, Samsung, they're great. And in Transcend, uh, I read the user reviews and that came up pretty high. Uh, I'll keep you posted how that goes. And it, it, this is a brand that's been on the market for a while. All right, so what I wanted in my enclosure, I wanted something very small and easy, easily accessible. All right. And in this case, I chose an Inatech, I-N-A-T-E-C-K, um, external enclosure, very, very small. That was really the key point for me. Um, compare this here, compare this. this is a 3.5 inch enclosure by iOmega. And what is that? So quite a, quite a difference. Of course, I'm showing you this big clunky drive, desktop drive, just as a comparison. Um, and you could still use that as a master backup. And here we go. So uh, what do we find here? I'm trying to keep you good with the light. So we have a um, active, a USB active LED light, uh, five volt external power supply if needed, then a USB 3.0 adapter. Um, there's a little indicator here that indicates that we should probably push this forward, which is, I'm do which is what I'm doing, and I hope I don't ruin it right away. Um, I have a tendency of doing that, of breaking things. Well, maybe I just did. Um, then we'll send it back. Let's see if I did. Nope, I did not. That's great. That's an improvement. Um, the reason why I say that is because I like to apply quite a bit of force to things. Not overly, but you know, just sometimes we're in a rush. So, oh, this seems well made, snapped into place. Um, how often it's gonna survive that is a question, but it was like, this enclosure was like $12 or so, something like that. Um, not expensive and the drive is under 200. So we're fabricating our own with, um, on a budget, still a lot more than uh, a regular, you know, 750 gigabyte drive, which is, you know, you can get that for $60 or so online. The thing though is with um, Yosemite and Mavericks, it doesn't spin down the drives anymore. What do I mean by that? When you have a regular hard drive connected to the Mac and it's not accessing it in 
Mountain Lion, it would, in previous versions, it would power the drive down. It would put it in pause, in standby mode, when you would enable, uh, put discs to sleep when not needed as an option. Uh, but that doesn't work at the moment, and you haven't changed it yet, so um, you don't want something that's spinning all the time in the background. So um, that's something I really uh, uh, don't want to see happen. Here we go, here's this. And, and by the way, if you buy something like this, you can, and if you have actually a, if you have actually a laptop where you can replace the hard drive, well then even better, then you can put this in there, or something like this in there, and another one on the outside, and you have absolutely no moving components. So this is a, a transcend here is a seven millimeter version, so it's thinner compared to nine millimeters. Thinner is better. And yay, it comes with the screws. And there's a tray. This is for for the desktop. Uh, if you wanted to mount this, for example, in an enclosure like that, this is what you would need or inside a, a real desktop. When I say real desktop, it's like conventional size, 3.5 inch form factor. What's a real and what's not. And this comes with the instruction with disk utility and so forth for the Mac. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll figure that out, of course, by ourselves. So, um, light is not the best, but you have a you have a, you know here's the SATA connector, and just make sure there's a small side, there's a small side, and there's a one is here's the small side, here's the wide side. So if it's divided in two. Make sure you uh, align it properly. Sometimes the drive might be going in like this, depending on the manufacturer where that label actually sits. All right, so this is this should be going in. Um, it's lined up. It is it. Yep, and it slides right in here. And again, we didn't break anything just yet. Yeah, sits comfortably. It's always a little bit of play here, so you can pull it out later on. Okay, so ready to close this up. Make sure this aligns on the tracks here. There's some two grooves here. Right, aligns it and then snaps into place. So now we're taking that included USB 3.0 cable. How do we know it's a USB 3.0 cable? Um, well, it's blue and it's got the little blue um, color marker here and this connector is also a little bit different. Well, this is very difficult for you to see um, with this light, but all right, we plug that in here. All right, and now we're going to connect it to make it the nice thing. This weighs nothing, by the way. Yeah, this, this weighs nothing. All right, let me bring the Mac closer. Because I also want to show you what I will be doing on it. All right. All right. So here's the size comparison. Very nice. We're going to plug this in here. And let's see if the power indicator comes on. Yes, it does. It's reading it. All right. So the first time you connect this to the Mac is says initialize, right? This, Disk you insert was not readable by this computer because uh, it w either wasn't formatted at all, right, or it was formatted for for the PC, you know, um, and so we have to do that, which is good anyways. It's a good habit to do that, um, to take control of your own formatting. Let me zoom in on this here really quickly. Yes, I do have a zoom on this camera, on this uh, 1985 camcorder here. From 1985, I'm kidding. Um, sometimes it feels like that though. All right, so we're gonna go initialize. And what that brings up, it brings up disk utility. And you can always pull up disk utility yourself when you buy it. And so this Mac here has a hundred, <laughs> yeah, about, I have about 160 gigs. The basic, um, uh, MacBook Airs, Retina MacBook Pros at this point, they ship with 128 gigabytes. Um, even if they're 256, that's not enough for a lot of things. So we want something that is, again, I mentioned, I keep mentioning this, that is low 
uh, power. It needs very little energy. It means it doesn't drain your battery. Also, doesn't spin. So when it's not in use, doesn't use uh, much or very, very little energy. Just standby energy. Maybe just that energy for that LED. Um, cool. So it is recognized as a 512 gigabyte drive. And by the way, uh, try to go for one that's not 480, but try to go for one that's 512. What we're going to be doing is you can either hit erase or partition. When you do partition, uh, that means you... I'm trying to figure out how I can show you this properly. Yeah, we're going to turn it and we're going to adjust. All right. Now I have a better grip. Let me zoom in. Zooming in. Actually, the, the proper way of doing this is, is, is to do this with a screenshot, but I think you're going to um, get the idea. So um, we're going to go into disk utility here in um, yellow. It's marking the uh, external USB drive. It's when you have the yellow icon uh, in orange in comparison to um, the gray one, which is an internal disk. Um, and then we're going to partition it if you want several partitions I just want one partition and um, choosing Mac OS X extended journaled that's what you want to um, choose you can later on encrypt it as well for data security um, the drive can then only be unlocked with a security code that's to be done in system preferences but for right now my drive is my external drive I usually call it media because great typing um, nice media um, and because it stores my music my movies anything that is large some of my photos so media is a good name and then the internal one I keep it at Macintosh HD I'm not touching anything uh, it's in relation to the computer here all the changes I'm doing is for the outside here right uh, so that this little guy is um, working here we go and um, so I'm going to erase it now. You have to click erase in this case. Basically erases what's on there before. So transcend, transcend, and in attack. There you go. There you go. All right. So this is done. It shows up here nicely as media as you can see it's nice I mean, let's, let me do the hearing test here hello hello there's absolutely no moving parts this is beautiful this is very very light All right so um great and whenever you eject this drive don't just pull it out always either drag it through the trash or uh eject you can eject with right clicking on it right right control or click depending how your mouse is set up or just drag it into the trash. Little extra step in case something is going on in the background. Now, you can use this also as a time machine backup where everything gets backed up. So in this case, we would uh, set up time machine uh, accordingly, appropriately. Um, a word on time machine on backing this up. So this is basically acting as an external, as a storage expander for my system. So I bought my system with 128 or 256, not quite enough to hold everything uh, that I that I own, you know, in terms of media. Remember, we used to have 500, 750 gigabytes and one terabyte. Um, drives internally in the computer up until a couple of years ago but that was before the flash um, drive started and flash is a lot faster five times faster but byte for byte a lot more expensive so the drives the sizes have shrunk a lot of the things are now in the cloud so the manufacturers are saying well it's in the cloud you know who cares about it uh, let's make them smaller more portable this is what consumers want and I agree with that uh, but so this is how we extend our um, just sort of like an upgrade if you want. Now, keep in mind, now if we have Time Machine set up, we're going to need a third, a second external hard drive. Maybe the big clunker that I showed you earlier. Maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. Or another one of these, but maybe a conventional, because remember, you don't have to put a solid state in there. You can put anything you want. You can put any normal form factor in there. Um, this, by the way, has the UADP protocol 
um, that supports flash. So it actually gives you that performance that you need. Not all external um, USB 3.0 enclosures do that. Um, and then, so uh, you then also want to make sure get that this is backed up. Now, I'm sounding maybe a little bit overly complicated. The rule of thumb is that your data needs to live on two different places at any given time at the same time. At any given time at the same time. So that makes sense. Uh, for me, I have it in three places at the same time. Um, you know, it could be in your garage, it could be in a bank safe. It depends how important your data is. So um, this would be now your system and this system also needs to be backed up. So if you have a large a one terabyte or two terabyte drive that costs you know hundred dollars or so, um, you can then partition it into two pieces. So you don't need a backup for a backup physical drive for this and a backup a physical drive for this. You just set up one drive with two partitions and that again can be done uh, in uh, disk utility. Do that here and then you would set two partitions. Okay. And this is not, again, to make it more complicated. This is just a note for you for the future. Um, if you want to upgrade, if you want to back up, keep those things in mind. All right. So we had the Transcend uh, 2.5 inch. That's the form factor. That's the size that's in laptops, con laptops conventionally. Uh, SATA 6 gigabits per second, 512 gigabytes storage. The 6 gigabits per second is the speed, the maximum potential transfer speed that uh, more than often, you know, the reality is a little bit less, but this has very good uh, benchmarks from what I researched. So this should um, give us some good results. Um, and it came, it was put into an Inotech, Inotech, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's German at the end, CK, and then um, I don't know one in the beginning. All right, my friends, that's about it. Um, remember to always protect your data and be creative and don't feel the need to always buy a new computer. Um, you can do it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.